Introducing delegates from higher education organizations and learned societies.
Mercy College of Health Sciences academic procession. Now introducing the Mercy College of Health Sciences Board of Directors. Introducing the platform party. All rise for the presenting of the fourth president of Mercy College of Health Sciences, Dr. Adrian Henry.
Please, Please be, be seated. seated. Uh, oh, I thought. Are you the? I mean, if you want to, Matt. I mean, you can host. I don't want to step on your toes. Oh, no, no. You can certainly host. I mean, I don't even think this is a script. It says Dr. Mars well, HR you, file. HR file. <laughs> you might have to go off script. You know, we could probably just rise, rise as, as one. one. And do this together? Sure. Well, why don't you go ahead and get started? I'd be delighted to. On behalf of the Mercy College of Health Sciences Board of Directors, it is my privilege to welcome you to the formal ceremony of investiture of our fourth president, Dr. Adrian Henry. This celebration is meant not only to honor Dr. Henry and the contributions and accomplishments he has already made to our Des Moines and campus communities, but also to recognize Mercy College and our role as a leader in Catholic higher education. Thank you for joining us as we celebrate this exciting new chapter in Mercy College's history. At this time, I invite you to stand for the Star Spangled Banner performed by the Dowling Catholic High School Grace Notes and remain standing for the invocation from the Most Reverend William M. Johnson, Bishop of the Diocese of Des Moines. We pray, God of light and love, may your face and your truth shine forth upon all gathered this afternoon, especially Dr. Adrian Henry as he's formally installed as the fourth president of Mercy College of Health Sciences. May he be eminently wise in leading the institution over which he presides. May he encourage due respect for human dignity, virtue, justice, and mercy, so that we might bask in the grace and glory of your risen son. By our presence here, we signal our willingness to enact what we have learned and received from those noble founders who've gone before us in faith, service, and scholarship. We trust that as for Mother Mary Catherine McCauley, as, we, as long as we work humbly with you and one another, you will accompany us as you have your people in the past. May we listen well to those who will speak to us so that we might take heart and be strengthened in hope for what lies ahead. As we invoke your name and your presence, we ask that you fix our sights and our hearts upon what is true, honorable, excellent, and worthy of praise, so that you, God of peace, will abide with us, and together we will rise as one, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Today we will hear Dr. Henry's vision for the future of Mercy College. 
We are confident his knowledge and experience will further establish Mercy College as a leader in health sciences education and extend our ministry of healing and compassionate care across the region. An important part of any institution is the community in which it was built. We gather today to share words of encouragement, excitement, and confidence with our peers and fellow leaders across higher education, healthcare, and our faith communities. Your presence here today is a testament to the impact Mercy College has had in, the, in Des Moines, Iowa, and the region, and reminds us of the important role each of you have already played in Mercy College's storied history. With Dr. Henry's guidance and vision for the future, we hope to continue to build upon that legacy. Today, we will ask key representative, representatives to lead the assembly in pledging their support to Dr. Henry and Mercy College of Health Sciences. Together, we will unite and rise as one. As we reflect on the importance of this community, let us remember the thoughtfulness and courage of the leaders who have come before us, chiefly the Sisters of Mercy and others who have served in the role of president previously. We would not be here without these individuals and others who have kept the mission and vision of the Sisters of Mercy in their hearts and who have sacrificed for the betterment of our students and the most vulnerable we serve. It is fitting that today we are joined by esteemed colleagues and speakers who embody the spirit of Mercy College, individuals who represent healthcare, the cornerstone of a Mercy College education stretching back to 1899, community members and politicians who have been steadfast in supporting our role as the downtown Des Moines campus, our faculty, staff, and of course our students. After all, Mercy College only exists to serve our students and provide a meaningful foundational education to support them in their personal and professional journeys. With Dr. Henry's experience as a leader in higher education and as a healthcare professional himself, Mercy College has made tremendous strides toward realizing our identity and role as guardians of not only our students and community members, but all of those who are called to serve in our classrooms, on our campus, and in our hospitals and clinical rotations throughout Des Moines and the entire region. Through the dedicated work of Mercy College faculty and staff, we will continue to embark on new endeavors that will take Mercy College forward in ways never before conceived, establishing ourselves as a beacon of inspiration and faith to all who wish to pursue a career in healthcare. At this time, I would ask you to direct your attention to pages six and seven of the program, and please join your representatives in pledging your continued commitment to the work Dr. Henry and Mercy College have begun as we rise as one toward the future. At this time, would all students in attendance please rise and join 2023 Bachelor of Science in Nursing candidate Lauren Gosh in reciting the student pledge found on page six of your program. We, the students of Mercy College of Health Sciences, have dedicated ourselves to the pursuit of knowledge to serve those most in need. We pledge our support to Dr. Henry and promise to uphold the legacy of excellence established by the Sisters of Mercy and all those alumni who have come before us. Please be seated. Would all alumni in attendance please rise and join Academic Coordinator of Clinical Education for the Physical, Physical Therapy Assistant Program and Alumni Association Chair Alyssa Thompson in reciting the alumni pledge found on page six of your program. We the alumni of Mercy College of Health Sciences compassionately care for the sick and vulnerable, carrying out the legacy of the Sisters of Mercy with reverence for those we serve. We pledge our support to Dr. Henry and promise to respond faithfully to the growing challenges and opportunities facing our healthcare systems. Thank you. Please be seated. Would all staff in attendance please rise and join admissions counselor and staff council chair Alex Grant in reciting the staff pledge found on page six of your program. We, the staff of Mercy College Attent of Health Sciences, attentively serve our students with integrity in collaboration with members of our campus community. We pledge our commitment to Dr. Henry and to the students we are called to serve each day. Please be seated. 
Would all faculty in attendance please rise and join Janet Whitney, medical laboratory assistant, lab, medical laboratory assistant professor and college senate chair in reciting the faculty pledge found on page six of your program. We, the faculty of Mercy College of Health Sciences, dutifully uphold the core values of our institution in our classroom, across our campus, and with our students who entrust us with their learning. We pledge our support to Dr. Henry and vow to continue to seek wisdom, truth, and understanding from all those we encounter. Please be seated. Would all de delegates from higher education institutions and learned societies in attendance please rise and join Gary Steinke, president of the Iowa Association of Independent Colleges and, and Universities in reciting the pledge found on page seven of your program. As delegates from higher education organizations and institutions, we gather to pledge our support to Dr. Henry as the fourth president of Mercy College of Health Sciences. Through collaboration and partnerships, we will unlock new educational opportunities to support and serve the students of our region and throughout the great state of Iowa. Please be seated. Would all members of Mercy College of Health Sciences Board of Directors in attendance please rise and join the board's vice chair and treasurer, Paul Erickson, in reciting the Board of Directors pledge found on page seven of your program. Thank you. The Board of Directors at Mercy College of Health Science guides the institution to achieve its vision while upholding our mission and the legacy of the Sisters of Mercy. We pledge our commitment to Dr. Henry and the students, staff, faculty, alumni, and friends who seek a Mercy College education or encounter a Mercy College healthcare professional. Please be seated. Would all members of the religious community please rise and join Bishop William Johnson of the Diocese of Des Moines and members of the Mercy College of Health Sciences Board of Directors in reciting the religious community members pledge found on page seven of your program. As members of the religious community, we seek to uphold the dignity of every human person and to advocate for the vulnerable and those in most need. We bear witness to Mercy College of Health Sciences cherished role in upholding Catholic social teachings and educating servant leaders in healthcare. We pledge our support to Dr. Henry as he seeks to love and serve those around him and promise to remain steadfast witnesses to God's divine plan. Please be seated. Would all pr present please rise and join Mercy College's Vice President of Business and Regulatory Affairs, Tom Leahy, in the full assembly pledge found, on, uh, found at the bottom of page seven in your program. We're grateful for being joined together in this time and place in support of a community that continually inspires us to wonder and grow. We pledge our commitment to Dr. Henry and promise to share in our loyalty and commitment to supporting Mercy College's mission as we work to realize our vision. We are one team with one goal, devotion to student success. Please be seated. Thank you all for your commitment to Dr. Henry and to Mercy College of Health Sciences. There is no doubt the support of those in this room is a large part of why Mercy College continues to excel. We are joined together in our shared purpose as guardians of both Mercy College's legacy and our vision for the future. At this time, it's my distinct pleasure to introduce Bob Ritz, CEO and President of Mercy One, to charge Dr. Henry with a call to service. Robert P. Ritz has served as CEO of Mercy One, an integrated system of more than 40 hospitals and 230 healthcare facilities since 2017. Bob holds a master's degree in healthcare administration from Cornell University and a bachelor's degree in business administration from Wheeling Jesuit University in West Virginia. Prior to becoming CEO of Mercy One, 
Bob served in several leadership roles at many healthcare organizations, including as president of Mercy Medical Center, division president of Hospital Sisters Health System in Springfield, Illinois, president and CEO of Monongalia, I hope I said that right, healthcare system in Morgantown, West Virginia, and president and CEO of St. Mary's Hospital in Waterbury, Connecticut, where he began his nearly 40-year career in health systems leadership in 1987. Bob served on the Mercy College of Health Sciences Board of Directors from July 2013 to July 2017 and remains instrumental in the advancement of our mission. Aside from his numerous professional accomplishments, Bob and his wife Mary have three sons and three grandsons and currently reside in Urbandale. Please join me in giving a warm mercy welcome to Bob Ritz. Let me get out my speech. I told the governor I think I gotta figure out what to say now. Thank you very much. That introduction was longer than my remarks, Dr. Henry. Uh, in any event, good afternoon, everyone. And on behalf of Mercy One and our system of health services, which spans all of Iowa and even crosses the borders into South Dakota and Illinois, it's truly an honor to be here with you today to, to welcome and officially congratulate Dr. Henry as the Mercy College Health Sciences fourth president. Uh, I've had an opportunity to work with Dr. Henry already in his short time here, and I have a great passion for Mercy College. I have a great passion for Catholic health care, and I have a great passion for what we stand to bring together. And I can confirm for you that Dr. Henry, too, is very interested in the, the overall system of services we provide, starting at the very beginning, which is finding those young professionals that want to enter health care and giving them excellence in academic training and clinical experiences for our wonderful faculty and staff, our facility, the board of directors, and our entire Mercy family. So Dr. Henry, we salute you, we congratulate you, and now I'm gonna talk about you. <laughs> so in the first uh, few months that I've had a chance to, to work with Dr. Henry, and I must say, he made the first opening to let's spend some time together, which is always a good sign, uh, because you really want somebody who's inspired to want to take the college to the next level. And Dr. Henry has a great deal of background. He's got a great background in serving our country, and thank you for your service, Dr. Henry. He's got a great background in medicine and science, and he's got a real passion for excellence in education. I can't think of a better combination of background skills and experiences to take the Mercy College of Health Sciences to the next level. And so, Dr. Henry, we, we, we look forward to working together our Mercy One team embraces the opportunity to, to partner with you and all of the people in this room to provi provide educational excellence and experiences for healthcare professionals into the future. If you think about the Mercy College of Health Sciences, it was started in 1899 by the Sisters of Mercy. And if you look specifically at the reason for beginning the college, it's because the sisters wanted to address the growing demand for healthcare professionals. Now keep in mind they had communities and ministries because they were there to take care of people who had needs. And they found a way to, to band together with the delivery system and the education of healthcare professionals to fulfill the mission of their hospitals and their ministry of serving communities. And they did so without a lot of fanfare. They did so through their hearts, their eyes, and hands. They were caregivers, they were educators, they were community shepherds. And we have an opportunity right now between our 47 hospitals in this state, our 24,000 healthcare professionals, the legacy of Mercy College of Health Sciences, our amazing faculty and staff, our excellence in legacy and education, and with the new president, think about what we could do together. So my call to you, to all of you, to all of us, is to be one. To be one in service, to be one in education, to be one in opportunity. You're gonna hear from a moment from the greatest leader of our state, the governor. And I will tell you, she is committed to bringing youthful people through the organizations to create the workforce of the future that we so badly need. And all of us can play a pivotal role in making that happen in healthcare. We have a very large healthcare ecosystem, but we should never ever forget where it started. It was the sisters, their passion to care for those who were in need. So Dr. Henry, I know after sharing a few months with you, that you believe in excellence, you believe in community, and you believe in together. 
and rising as one is obviously the motto that we celebrate today. So with that, congratulations, officially welcome you, and we look forward to our future together. Thank you, Bob. You know, Bob told me that uh, he couldn't follow a script, and I looked at him, I said, I know, I've tried to write a script for Dr. Henry, and he won't follow it either. So <laughs> folks who know Dr. Henry might know, might know that as well. So thank you, Bob. At this time, it is my pleasure to introduce the Honorable Kim Reynolds, Governor of the great state of Iowa. Governor Kim Reynolds is the 43rd Governor of Iowa and has the distinction of being the first woman, woman elected to the state's highest office. Governor Reynolds has a long-standing record of public service, having served, served four terms as Clark County Treasurer before being elected to the Iowa Senate in 2008. In 2010, she was elected Lieutenant Governor alongside Governor Terry Branstad, serving nearly two terms before su succeeding Branstad in May 2017. She was elected to her first full term in office in November 2018 and re-elected to her second term in November 2022. A small town, rural Iowan at heart, Governor Reynolds grew up in Madison County, graduated from Interstate 35 Community Schools, and was awarded her bachelor's degree from Iowa State University in 2016 during her second term as Lieutenant, Go Lieutenant Governor. Governor Reynolds and her husband Kevin cherish spending time together as a family with their three daughters, sons-in-law, and 11 grandchildren who live nearby in central Iowa. Please join me in welcoming the Honorable Governor of Iowa, Kim Reynolds. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Marr, for that. Uh, thank you so much, and thank you for that very nice introduction. And it is certainly my honor and my pleasure uh, to be here to help celebrate the inauguration of Dr. Adrian Henry as the fourth president of Mercy College of Health Sciences. You know, I want to start by thanking Mercy College for everything that it does to train skilled and compassionate health care professionals to serve Iowa's communities a need that's never been greater than it is today. Three of the top five open positions currently listed on the Iowa Workforce Development's website are in nursing. You know, Iowa is working hard to continue to be a reliable partner on this issue through recruitment programs like loan repayment and innovative uh, registered apprenticeship program to help high school students engage and pursue nursing careers and more. We all know that tomorrow's workforce ensures access to quality health care in every corner of our great state. And we also recognize that higher education will be a critical piece of any long-term solution. And that's why today's inauguration is so very encouraging. I couldn't be more convinced that Dr. Henry is the right fit for this position. His extensive resume includes several degrees from the associate to the doctoral levels in everything from medicine and music to education and business. He served in the United States Army, thank you, operated as a refractive surgery in a uh, refractive surgery practice and needless to say has considerable success in academia. Clearly his credentials are impeccable and impressive. Yet we know the lessons of leadership aren't necessarily learned from a textbook. Success requires having a vision, setting goals, and taking accountability for reaching them. It takes robust partnerships, not only with students, family, and faculty, but also with other institutions, public and private. It isn't easy, and it requires a certain kind of person and leader. And I was fortunate to have the opportunity to sit down with Dr. Henry last week. I was blown away and so impressed by his vision for the school as student-centered, innovative, and accountability, accountable for the success of its alumni. That same vision, as you've heard, is reflected in the theme of the inaugural address, rising as one, and the motto, one team, one goal, devotion to student success. And it's this laser-like intentional focus on students. It's exactly what we need at every single level of our education system. But even more than any one conversation or as many career qualifications, 
The clearest sign that Dr. Henry will excel is his remarkable personal background and story. This is a leader who not only understands the promise of a good education, but who has actually lived it. He knows from experience that the best gift that we can give students is to hold them to a high academic standard and then put them in a position to meet it. From a challenging childhood to the top leadership post at an institution of higher learning, his journey is inspiring, a testament to the power of education to change lives. It's also a testament to the kind of person he is, to quote what he calls his personal motto, I rent my title, I own my character. If a leader's approach trickles down to the whole team, then Mercy College, College's future is truly bright. So Dr. Henry, congratulations again on your inauguration. Kevin and I in the state of Iowa welcome you and Karen uh, and your two children to, uh, to Iowa. And we are so fortunate to have you here and we look forward to a very long and successful partnership. So God bless you and thank you both very much. Thank you. Thank you, Governor Reynolds. It's an honor to have you here with us today and for your generous words of hope, encouragement, and confidence in our vision for the future of healthcare and education for Mercy College and for our state. Now, the moment we've all been waiting for, the reason we all came, should we get on with it, Matt? Let's rise as one and get on with the occasion, Dr. Marr. Uh, that was a little forced. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, I couldn't help myself. Well, you can try again later. Uh, at this time, I would like to invite Dr. Henry to come forward and for his family to join us on the stage. Dr. Henry is accompanied by his wife, Karen, daughter, Abrielle, and son, Adrian Jr. Also joining us is Staff Council Chair Alex Grant, who on behalf of the Board of Directors will honor Dr. Henry with the transfer of the chain of office and Emily McAllister, the Chair of our Board of Directors. On behalf of the Board of Directors, it is our pleasure to present Dr. Henry with the chain of the office. This is the original chain created for the college's first president, and it is adorned with medallions that depict open books engraved with the core values of our institution. I wish to present this to Dr. Henry with two special requests, that he be a good guardian of this significant piece of Mercy College history while he serves as our fourth president and that he honors the important role that our core values of knowledge, reverence, integrity, compassion, and excellence have on our faith, history, and place in our community and region as he guides Mercy College forward into the future. You may notice, Dr. Henry, that it's heavy, right? <laughs> there are days when this burden of the office will weigh on you. Please look upon those who have come together today and know that we have gathered here to support and encourage you when the weight becomes unbearable and to rise as one to the challenges and opportunities to come. Since medieval times, the mace has been recognized as a symbol of authority for colleges and universities. The mace is the symbol of presidential authority. It confers upon the president the right to govern. The mace is used in ceremonial occasions, and its presence is symbolic of the fact that the authority of the college is present with us today. 
The passing of this MACE represents the transfer of institutional authority by the Board of Directors from one administration to the next. The Mercy College MACE is a three-dimensional representation of the College Seal, which encompasses the cross of the Sisters of Mercy, surrounded symbolically, symbolically by the leaves of the biblical tree of life, which are transformed into the serrated edge of the medieval weapon of which the mace shares a historical reference. It is my pleasure to have Mercy College Senate Chair Janet Whitney join me on behalf of the Board of Directors in honoring Dr. Henry with the transfer of Mercy College of Health Sciences mace. At this time, I would like to introduce Sister of Mercy Marie Parker, Board Secretary for the Conference for Mercy Higher Education, who will now conduct the mission affirmation and mercy blessing on behalf of the Sisters of Mercy. The constitutions of the Sisters of Mercy our rule of life that describes who we are and what we do says this about how important Mercy College of Health Sciences is to the Sisters of Mercy. As Sisters of Mercy, we share our charism and heritage to associate members of the Mercy Conference for Higher Education to address our enduring concerns and to witness Christ's mission. Within these institutions, we, together with our associated coworkers and those we serve, strive to model justice and mercy and to promote systemic change according to these ideals. Since the founding of the Sisters of Mercy by Catherine McCauley in Dublin, Ireland in 1831, Education at all levels has been a hallmark of our congregation and continues today as one of our enduring concerns. Mercy College, in its various stages of development, has been part of the legacy of Mercy Education for over a hundred years. And the Mercy passion for education forms the core of the values of this college. But the commitment to a Mercy education is not just about the past. Mercy College points its college community to the future with its challenges that the horizon is the starting point as the college joins the Sisters of Mercy in their commitment to modeling justice and mercy and promoting systemic change in a world desperately in need of hope and right relationships. It is this legacy and this future that we at the Conference for Mercy Higher Education share with you today, Dr. Henry. A sacred trust indeed, and one that you have taken up with enthusiasm and commitment. And so, in the name of the Sisters of Mercy and of the Conference for Mercy Higher Education, through which, as an associate member, you share in our charism, I invite you to respond to this moment of mission affirmation and mercy blessing. As president of Mercy College of Health Sciences, will you affirm the Catholic and mercy identity and mission as a key priority in both word and deed? I will. Will you provide opportunities for the campus community to develop an awareness of the mercy tradition and legacy of the Sisters of Mercy and promote the integration of this mission and identity throughout the college's programs, policies, and practices? I will. 
Will you engage actively as an associate member in the Conference for Mercy Higher Education, fostering the relationship with the Sisters of Mercy and with other institutions of Mercy Higher Education across the Mercy Institute? I will. The Sisters of Mercy welcome you, President Adrian Henry, as the fourth president of Mercy College of Health Sciences and as our partner in both the legacy and the future of our Mercy mission. As a sign of our affirmation of this Mercy mission commitment, we give you a medallion of our foundress, Catherine McCauley. May she guide your steps in the days and years ahead. And may God, who has begun this good work in you today, provide you with all that you need each day to fulfill what you have promised. Amen. At this time, I'd like to invite Emily McAllister, Chair of the Board of Directors, to the podium for the formal rite of installation of Dr. Henry. It is my honor to be with you here today to install Dr. Adrian Henry as the fourth president of Mercy College of Health Sciences. Dr. Henry is an experienced leader. He comes to us with a background in higher education leadership, military leadership, and optometry, prepared and eager to usher in a new era for Mercy College. He will lead us toward realizing our vision, rising as one, to meet the challenges of higher education, embrace the opportunities of the healthcare industry, and advance Mercy College as a leader in health sciences education. As chair of the board of directors, I have come to know Dr. Henry as a dedicated, insightful, and passionate leader. His infectious enthusiasm and energy are matched only by his pursuit of excellence, his commitment to servant leadership, and his devotion to Mercy College's mission, heritage, vision, and values. Dr. Henry promises to be a president who will put students first as we prepare our graduates for service and leadership in the healthcare community. The board of directors and I are confident Dr. Henry will be a resolute guardian of the traditions of Mercy College and the Sisters of Mercy and remain steadfast in upholding our mission, vision, and values. At this time, I invite Dr. Henry to officially swear in to assume the office of president. Dr. Henry, will you carry out the duties incumbent of the president according to the provisions of the law and in accordance with the church in which you have been called to exercise your service? I will. Dr. Henry, do you promise that you will strive to uphold through your words and actions the legacy of Mercy College of Health Sciences. I will. Dr. Henry, will you faithfully uphold and serve Mercy College of Health Sciences to the best of your ability, taking this obligation freely and willingly? I will. Dr. Henry, will you fulfill the charge entrusted to you, assisting all members of Mercy College in their good work so that all activities may be carried out in fidelity to our students, alumni, and the communities in which we serve, so help you God. I will. Ladies and gentlemen, by exercising the authority vested in me by the Board of Directors, it is my honor to present to you the fourth president of Mercy College of Health Sciences, Dr. Adrian Henry. <laughs>
Just as Mercy College is supported by a strong, resilient community, so too does every leader have an influential mentor who has supported them on their journey, counseled them through adversity, and encouraged them to reach their goals. While Dr. Henry has many mentors and supportive family members in attendance today, Dr. Louis Agnesi has served as his professional mentor for several years and is here with us to speak on behalf of Dr. Henry and his journey to becoming the fourth president of Mercy College of Health Sciences. Dr. Louis J. Agnesi is president of Texas Health and Science University in Austin, Texas. He previously served as the University of the Incarnate Word, of the president as the University of the Incarnate Word in San Antonio. Upon his retirement from the University of the Incarnate Word in 2016, he was named President Emeritus in honor of his historic 31-year tenure. Dr. Agnesi began his career as a teaching professional and leader in health education in 1976 at Pennsylvania's Gannon, Gannon University. In 1981, he joined Briarcliff University in Iowa as vice president. He moved to San Antonio in 1985 when, at the age of 33, he was named president of the University of the Incarnate Word. At that time, the University of the Incarnate Word was the 19th largest private university in Texas. By his retirement, the University of the Incarnate Word was the, third, was the state's third largest private university with a global enrollment of more than 11,000 students. Dr. Agnesi, whose life and career are chronicled in the biography, Lou from Brooklyn to Broadway, by Patricia Watkins is the recipient of many professional and civic honors. They include honorary doctoral degrees, the Governor Briscoe Salute to Excellence Award, the Ford Salute to Education Lifetime Achievement Award, and the San Antonio Business Journal's Legacy Leaders Award. Although Dr. Agnesi is not Hispanic, he was inducted by the Hispanic Sports Foundation into its National Hispanic Heritage Hall of Honor for his service to education. Dr. Agnesi holds a PhD in counselor education from the University of Pittsburgh, an education specialist degree, and a master's of education in counseling from Gannon University, and a bachelor's degree from St. Mary of the Plains College. Originally from New York, Dr. Agnesi is married and has two adult children. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Louis Agnesi. If you notice the little limp, uh, I strain my leg. It's what the cost of getting old. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm honored to join you today at this memorable occasion. The history inauguration of Adrian Henry as the fourth president of Mercy College of Health Science. Speaking at this event is an easy one since the highlight of my nearly 50 year career in higher education. Adrian is not just a good friend, he's my third son, but he's also one of those rare individuals that when you first meet them, you know that they're destined for great things. I am pleased to be back in Iowa, which holds a very special place in my heart. Being here as part of the higher education journey that began at Briarcliff University uh, in, in 1980. It changed the course of my life. I have many Terrific memories of the four years I served as vice president at Briarcliff, as it was known in those days, except for one, the wonderful cold weather in Iowa. <laughs> I'm originally from a small town on the East Coast called Brooklyn. My, my first winter in Sioux, Sioux City quickly taught me my first valuable lesson as a new vice president. Always keep handy a long extension cord to plug in a heater so your car, car battery can stay warm. I would be remiss if I didn't mention that today is also a tribute to the legacy of the then Briarcliff president, Dr. Charles Benson. Benson was one of the finest educators I ever knew. Charlie took me under his wing and nurtured the leadership potential he saw in me as a brand new 29-year-old Briarcliff vice president. Because of his belief and encouragement, four years later, at the age of 33, God, that was a long time ago, I, w I was chosen president of the University of the Incarnate Word in San Antonio. Not surprisingly, another one of my professional highlights occurred when Charlie introduced me at my inauguration in 1986. Some, or as some people in San Antonio still like to say, the last time I was, I was spotted wearing an academic cap. 
I know Charlie, who passed away in 1994, would be humbled and honored to know that his legacy of leadership continues with Adrian in 2023, and that appropriate enough, it continues in Iowa. Let me tell you now how I first met Adrian about eight years ago. He was a was fairly new assistant professor at the Incarnate Word Rosenberg School of Optometry. And by then, I had already been president of Incarnate Word for 30 years. Adrian initially approached my former chief of staff and asked if he could serve, have a meeting with me. Adrian made a good impression on him, so he ran this past me, allowing me to give you an idea of what my professional life was like in those days. Because quite frankly, I was extremely skeptical on whether I could effectively mentor anyone due to the ever increasing demands of my time that were, were driven by the university's un unprecedented expansion. So if you would please indulge me for a few moments, I'll, I'll, I'll briefly recap my world at Incarnate Word in 2015. We were experienced tremendous enrollment growth that had recently allowed us to become the third largest private university in the great state of Texas. After opening the School of Pharmacy, Optometry, and Physical Therapy in the previous decade, we were getting ready to open a medical school that would be the first at a Catholic university in the United States in over 100 years. We will continue the, ex the expansion of, of the financial tr tr transition to, to Division I athletics, which included the high cost involved in, field in fielding a football team. Construction had begun on a new student center, a $45 million facility. We were getting ready to open our second campus in Irapuato, Mexico, our second full location in that country. And we had also re recently opened study centers in Germany and France. We had expanded to nine physical locations in San Antonio, giving us a, a presence in nine out of the 10 council districts. And we now had more than 2,000 full and part-time employees, one of the largest employers in San Antonio. I also had a very heavy travel schedule, which kept me on the road two weeks a month. As you might imagine, when I was in town, my days were filled with constant meetings. My schedule was usually so packed that most of my lunch hours was devoted to business meetings with outside donors, while many of the evenings involved around university-related functions. There were internal and external presentations at aiming and raising the university's profile and advancing its academic and religious mission. By now, you can probably guess why I wasn't really sure I, I was able to take on this very complex and, uh, uh, ability to mentor Dr. Henry. Still, I was intrigued with the newly hired professor who would have the gumption to want me to serve as his mentor, so we scheduled a meeting. Let me add one other thing. I was famous, or depending on your perspectives, infamous for the lengths of my meetings. While most of what was initially scheduled for half an hour, they really, regardless of who I was speaking to, politicians, dignitaries, business leaders, I probably try to limit many of my meetings to no more than 15 minutes. But this changed with Adrian. When we first met, I was immediately impressed with him, like so many of you said already today. I appreciated his professional background, his academic credentials, his personal story, and his goal of wanting to someday be a university president. I used to have a leadership retreat with my leadership team every uh, summer at a, a at away location. And there was usually about 40 to 50 of, of the administration faculty there. And I announced at that meeting that Dr. Adrian Henry would become the first president out of this group. And I was right. <laughs> A lot of the people there would have disagreed, but that's why I was president. <laughs> I quickly determined that Adrian possessed the big picture qualities that decades of higher education experiences has shown me were necessary for a university president to succeed academic know-how, an entrepreneurial spirit, and a willingness to think outside the box. So usually, been a brief 15 minute at most meetings, stretch out my, my recollection to an hour. At the end of it, it was a no-brainer to become Adrian's mentor. Just as Charles Benson had taken me under, his dec uh, under me decades earlier at Briarcliff, 
I wanted Adrian to fulfill his own potential in higher education. I was confident that one day he would attain his dream of becoming a university president. When we began meeting and talking as much about our respective schedules allow, sometimes we would do it even after my retirement from Incarnate Word. I have a, a aging problem with my eyes, and so Adrian used to come to my house three times, I mean, three, two times a month to change out my contacts. First at Incarnate Word and then at Hallmark University where he's eventually appointed its chief academic officer and now being selected president of Mercy College. What a journey. Allow me to conclude with the following observations. These are extremely challenging times in higher education, challenging times for the country due to a number of factors. Those included shrinking enrollments, budget shortfalls, declining donor dollars, lack of institution innovation, and a difficulty in quickly adapting to the transformation of the student experience caused by the pandemic. These challenges would be tough enough to address on their own. However, they were compounded by the changing nature of the job of the university president. University presidents these days tend to be characterized by an unfortunate trait, high yearly turnover. President searches are costly, disruptive, and time consuming. Therefore, it's even more critical that university chooses the right president, someone capable of leading and inspiring an institution through the challenges. At this time, they must not only sustain, but expand the academic mission in an increasingly hyper-competitive educational market. Otherwise, choosing the wrong person can easily set back an institution's momentum for years, sometimes universities simply cannot longer afford to do. Yet the stark reality is that too many institutions fall short in accomplishing these important tasks. Well, I have great news for Mercy College, has done it in right in choosing Dr. Henry as the fourth president. He possesses the knowledge, energy, vision, wisdom, and compassion to lead Mercy to new heights that will secure its long-term future while continuing to offer a top-notch educational experience rooted in a Catholic heritage. I'm certain that the following years, Adrian will have a positive impact on the Mercy community in Iowa and elsewhere. Let me congratulate Adrian and his wonderful family, the best behaved children you'll ever meet. <laughs> These are exciting times at Mercy, embrace them and wisely use one of the greatest gifts that God has given us, and that is the gift of time. My dad was 103, my mother was 89. I had a nephew that died at 19. So you never know how much time God has given you. So every day needs to be used with passion and with love and with respect. May God continue to bless our country May God continue to bless Adrian and his family. And I always ended a speech at Incarnate Word by saying, praise be the Incarnate Word forever and ever. Thank you very much. <laughs> One last thing. Adrian is the only man that I know that I have to call Dr. Doctor. Thank you. Thank you, Governor Reynolds, Bob Ritz, and Dr. Lou Agnese for those kind words. Excuse me, President Henry. Yes, uh, Lauren, yes. I'm, I'm so sorry to interrupt, but when we had our first inauguration committee meeting, you had one request only, and that was to make the inauguration fun. That's right. And you all really delivered. The, I'm having fun. You all did well, Lauren. Well, I just thought of something that would make the inauguration even more fun. Well, what is that, Lauren? 
We know that one of your seven, seven degrees is a music degree, but there is also uh -oh. a rumor that you auditioned for American Idol. <laughs> I believe everyone would like to hear you. No, 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 no. Lauren, Lauren this, this is a presidential inauguration. Everyone is here to hear more of the ceremonies, the rituals. Nobody yeah. want to hear that. What do you guys that. think? You want to hear him sing? <laughs> oh my goodness. If there was a keyboard, where is the keyboard here? Well, if, if you all don't mind, I'm going to invite my best friend, Telvis Coleman, come to the stage. And can I have Dowell and Grace Note come back and, and help me? I used to think that I could not go on, and life was nothing but an all for song. And now I know the meaning of true love. I'm leaning on. I believe I can fly. I believe I can fly. I believe I 
Lauren, by the way, it's not a rumor that I once auditioned for American Idol. Now you all see why I didn't make it in the entertainment business. <laughs> thank you, Dowlin, Grace Notes. Thank you, Telvis Coleman. Thank you. Keyboard, keyboard here, sir. So let me, let me start. I, I want to first uh, thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who's the author and the finisher of my faith. It is because of him I stand before you today. So I'm extremely, extremely honored for this opportunity. You know, God is good. And, and all the time, God is good. So I thank you all for this opportunity. To my wife, Karen. She's my high school sweetheart. Yes, yes, yes. And, and just, just this week, we celebrated our 30th year anniversary. Thank you, baby, for believing in me, trusting me to lead the, this family, even when the finish line kept moving like seven degrees later, you were there. To my daughter, Abrielle, and my son, Adrian, you have supported me with an abundance of prayers. And you all, Karen, Abriel, Adrian, you are my point of pride. And I love you. <laughs> now, my mother is here. She's the mother. Stand up, mama. You look good in your white. My, my mother is the mother of nine children, and four of the ninth, four of the eight, my eight siblings, are here with us. Stephen, Audrey, Edward, Melissa, thank you all for being here. And my mother-in-law is here. You remember I said we met in high school, right? So my mother-in-law have been along this journey alongside me. So mother-in-law, Margaret, please stand. And she's the mother of eight children, and four of her children are here with us today. Charlotte, Paulette, Lenora, am I missing one? And Karen. <laughs> Thank, thank you all for being here. One of my aunts is here, Aunt Dora from Chicago. Please stand, Auntie. And her children are here. Stand, please. Be recognized. And then I have some cousins here from, from Mississippi, Georgia. Please stand, cousins. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Out-of-state guests, please stand and be recognized. Out-of-state guests. Thank you. Thank you for joining me this day. Thank you, thank you. Mercy College Board of Directors, will you please stand and be recognized, please? Thank you, thank you. So now I, I want to, to thank the world's finest, and I use the word finest, the world's finest students, faculty, staff, 
alumni, my cabinet, Julie Blymel, and guests. You have made this historical moment possible. As the fourth president of this esteemed institution, I am both honored and humbled to stand before you today. I want to acknowledge the contributions of my predecessors who have helped to build Mercy College into the institution it is today. Their leadership and vision have laid the foundation for our continued success. And I am proud to carry on their legacy. Today marks a significant milestone in the history of our institution and in all who have contributed to our growth and success. Laura Winman shared that Catherine McCauley broke the impossibilities of her times. She animated many to walk with her. She animated others at the, end of, at the centers of wealth, power, and influence to share in her heroic efforts. She connected the rich to the poor, the, we the, health, the wealthy, sorry, she connected the rich to the poor, the healthy to the sick, the, ed the educated and skilled to the uninstructed, the influential to those of no consequence, to do the work of God on earth. Since the founding of the Sisters of Mercy by Catherine McCauley in Dublin, Ireland in 1831, education at all levels has been a hallmark for sisters and continues today as we make a positive impact on the world. From our humble beginnings, our institution was founded on April the 7th, 1899, as the Mercy Des Moines Medical School of Nursing with just seven students enrolled in its first class. After the consolidation of Mercy Hospital educational programs under the umbrella of Mercy School of Health Sciences in 1994, the School of Nursing joined with the schools of radiology, medical technology, perfusion, and the Mercy Regional Emergency Training Center. Unified as one institution in 1995, Mercy College of Health Sciences was officially formed. We have grown into a health sciences college offering 17 unique academic pathways in healthcare, including nursing, physical therapy assistant, radiologic technology, diagnostic medical sonography, emergency medical services, medical assisting, medical laboratory sciences, healthcare administration, health sciences, and public health. For 124 years, Mercy College of Health Sciences has been an integral part of the Mercy education legacy, with education being the cornerstone of our institution's core values. However, our dedication to Mercy education is not confined to the past. Rather, the college urges its community to look towards the future. With the belief that the horizon marks the beginning. In line with Sisters of Mercy, Mercy College of Health Sciences is committed to demonstrating justice and mercy, fostering systemic change, and promoting hope and positive relationships in a world that desperately needs them. In the fall of 2022, Iowa Workforce Development reported that there were over 4,500 online job advertisement for registered nurses. There are over 50,000 active licensed registered nurses with 41% age 50 or older. And 22% of Iowa's RNs are eligible to retire now. The Bureau of Labor Statistics in 2022 predicts employment of registered nurses is projected to grow 9% from 2020 to 2023 to 2030. It is projected that in 2030, nursing will be the number one job needed in Iowa. In Iowa, 18 colleges and universities offer associate degrees or certificates in nursing. 19 colleges or universities offer bachelor's degrees in nursing. 
nine colleges or universities offers master's or advanced degrees in nursing. Mercy College of Health Sciences offers associates, bachelors, and masters, and boasts the largest nursing program in the state of Iowa. Largely due to the college's affiliation with Mercy One and the amount of clinical rotations available to students. We recognize that the world of healthcare is constantly evolving. New technologies, new treatments, and new approaches to care are emerging every day. But one thing will never change is the need for a compassionate, skilled healthcare professionals who are dedicated to improving the lives of their patients. To that end, my administration will focus on three priorities, innovation, collaboration, and excellence. Innovation. Mercy College has long been at the forefront of innovation in healthcare education, and we will continue to build on that legacy by embracing new technologies and teaching methods that will enhance the learning experiences for our students. From simulation labs to online learning platforms, we will explore every avenue to ensure that our students have access to the latest tools and resources. Collaboration. We recognize that no institution could succeed in isolation. That is why we will work to forge new partnerships and collaboration with healthcare organizations, government agencies, and other educational institutions to provide our students with the broadest possible range of experiences and opportunities. So we are pleased to report our intent to start a three plus one accelerated nursing program with Loris College with clinical and lab experiences in Eastern Iowa. Excellence. At the heart of everything we do at Mercy College is a commitment to excellence. We will continue to set the highest standards for ourselves and our students. We will strive to ensure that every member of the Mercy College community is equipped with the knowledge, skills, and values they need to make a meaningful difference in the lives of their patients and their communities. In the words of Catherine McCauley, we must strive to do ordinary things extraordinarily well. The simplest and most practical lesson I know is to resolve to do good today, but better tomorrow. I have great confidence in you to do what you think is best, state your opinion, and always act with courage. Rising as one, may we walk in solidarity which is the spirit of, the, of belonging we get from Catherine McCauley. Regardless of our national, racial, ethnic, economic, ideological disparities, we are a united human family in solidarity. It is our responsibility to look after our fellow brothers and sisters, no matter where they may reside. With the world becoming more interconnected, Displaying affection for our neighbors has worldwide implications. At the center of solidarity principle is the pursuit of justice and peace. According to Pope St. Paul VI, working for justice is the path to attaining peace. The gospel instructs us to be agents of peace. Our love for all humanity necessitates that we promote peace in a world filled with hostility and disputes. Today, I believe we are rising as one. So let me close with three takeaways. My story, our promise, and our call to action. My story. So someone once told me, that no one makes it to the top by themselves. And I believe that. So you heard that I'm a first generation college graduate. So growing up in a single parent household, 
and Mississippi. My mother, my late father, believed that the sky was the limit. My mother believed that I was her wonder child. And she believed that as a wonder child, I could see things that no other could see. Thank you, Mama, for believing in me. My oldest sister, Audrey, at the age of nine, believed that I would become the first doctor in our family. Thank you, Audrey, for believing in me, because I did become the first doctor as an eye doctor in the family. <laughs> Dr. Lou Agnese believed that I can be a college or university president. And he told me, your medical degree is great, but you're going to need a PhD. So part of my seven degrees, I, I blame Dr. Lou Agnese for that. <laughs> but thank you, Dr. Agnese, for believing in me. <laughs> when I enrolled at the University of Pennsylvania, I told my classmates, I want to be a college or university president one day. My colleagues at Penn said, when you become that college or university president, we will be at your inauguration. Penn colleagues stand today. <laughs> Thank you for believing in me. Mercy College Board of Directors, they knew I had never been a college president before, but they believed that I can lead this venerable institution to greatness. Mercy College Board of Directors, thank you for believing in me. <laughs> now the story continues. On June 28, we were living in San Antonio, Texas. I have had this 1997 Ford F-150, the only truck like it of its kind in the country, custom conversion that I garaged, I babied, it was clean. I kept it garaged. In fact, I didn't allow too many people to drive it, but I kept it garaged. And so on June 28, we pulled this truck out of the garage. I hook a flatbed car hauler trailer and drives my wife SUV onto that trailer. And so we take off from Texas, and we said as a family, we committed to every time we cross a state line, we will get out of the vehicle and take a selfie. <laughs> yes. So we're driving along. We get to our first state line. The sign says, you are now leaving Texas. The military veteran in me did this. Tension, salute, bye-bye, Texas. <laughs> right behind that sign was the sign that says, welcome to Oklahoma. Click, Sefi. So we rushed back in the car, and we continued our journey. Now it's June 29th. We're driving. And we come down this large hill. And as we're coming down the large hill, we notice an immediate stop in the road on a two-lane highway. Immediate stop in the road. I had three potential options. Go into the oncoming traffic. No. Slide into the cars that are in front of me or go to the median. So I decided to go to the median. Well, the car that was directly in front of me decided to do the same thing. He went to the median, but he stopped. So now my options are limited. Couldn't go into the oncoming traffic, so we slid into this SUV. Low impact. Slid into the SUV. We're in Oklahoma. My wife, my daughter, was immediately taken to the local hospital. My son and I, we were OK. We, were, we remained on scene. Their truck came and said, this truck is a goner. It's going to be a total loss. So we're in Oklahoma, and we're stranded, but not so much. 
because the SUV and that car hauler trailer was undamaged. So we, un we disconnected and they totaled the truck off. And we pulled the S my wife's SUV. And while we were taking this time, there was a nurse that would come to the scene, drive back and forth to the scene and go back and tell my wife and daughter they're okay. And so finally, when we got everything all situated, we had a trailer left on the side of the road and we drive to the local hospital. We connect with my wife and daughter. And while we were there, found out that they were okay. While we were there, this nurse, her name, Sarita Hill, she says to me, well, where are you going? What are you trying to do? Are you from here? And I said, we're trying to get to Iowa. <laughs> she said to me, my husband, Donald, is retired, and he can help you. So I was telling them that my trailer was stuck on the side of the road. Donald got his son to come out and pull the trailer to safety. And I told them I had GPS, but Donald and Sarita took us to the nearest, which was 30 minutes away, to the nearest hotel. And they said, we're going to help you get to Iowa. So as I was thinking, what am I going to do? I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to rent a U-Haul because the SUV was OK, the trailer was OK, and then I can continue our journey. So I told Rita and Donald Hill, I'm going to rent a U-Haul. The very next day, on the 30th, they came to the hotel, another 30 minutes for them, drove me to the U-Haul place. Now, I went to the U-Haul place to rent a 10-foot truck, but that wasn't available. They had the 26-foot truck, and imagine another 18 feet after that hauling. My wife looks at me, and she says, you think you can drive this? With my fingers crossed, I said, oh, yes, I can drive this. Now, but when Donald saw this, he says, do you think you can drive this? And I said, hey, don't tell my wife, but I'm not sure. <laughs> so as we were taking off, I said to Donald and Sarita, for your generosity, what do we owe you? Donald Sarita says, nothing. I said, we got to give you something. They said, nothing. I said, what about your tank of gas? Let me fill it up, because it's 30 minutes back and forth. Let me fill up your tank of gas. Donald said, my tank is full. I said, well, let me buy you lunch. Let me buy you dinner. We're not hungry. We just want to help you get to Iowa. So I said to Donna and Sarita Hill, when I have my inauguration, I will send for you. Will you all help me thank Donna and Sarita Hill? Please stand. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we get back in the truck, and we're back on our journey. So we didn't forget our intent was to stop by the cross the city line. So our next sign says, it didn't say Oklahoma. It didn't say, welcome to Oklahoma. It says, Kansas welcomes you. So we get out of the, the U-Haul now, and we take a selfie. We get back in. And as we were driving, now we're about five hours from Iowa. We're driving. And I began to be discouraged, questioning whether I had made the right decision to uproot my family and move to Iowa. I continued to drive with doubt sitting in. But Governor Reynolds, I have you know that when we got to the state line of Iowa, that sign said, the people of Iowa welcomes you. The people of Iowa welcomes you. And so just like that sign, Mercy College of Health Sciences welcomes you. And so as, as we made it here and got here and got settled, people were asking me, and I've been here now nine months, how do you like Iowa? And I say to you, I love Iowa. <laughs> Why, Governor? Because the people of Iowa has welcomed me. 
So that's my story. Our promise at Mercy College of Health Sciences is to be true to our mission. Our mission states that Mercy College of Health Sciences prepares graduates for service and leadership in the healthcare community by integrating its core values with a professional and liberal arts and sciences education. Our vision, we will be locally and a regionally recognized institution, transforming students into healthcare professionals who live out and extend the ministry of healing. Our values, we have an acronym, K. Rice, knowledge, reverence, integrity, compassion, and excellence. Our motto, we will be one team with only one goal, and that goal is devotion to student success. Our new mascot is the guardian. Guardian means protector and defender of. We will protect and defend our students. One of our core values happen to be compassion. Compassion means to suffer with. It's an intangible word for, it's a tangible word for love. So guess what, Mercy College of Health Science, we're gonna love on our students because it's part of our values. So our call to action, my college and university presidents, we have now have to stop asking the question, are students ready for college? Instead, we must ask, are our colleges ready for students? Thank you. So as a military tradition, if you've done something above and beyond the call of duty, you are coined with a coin to say you've done something exceptional. Today, Mercy College of Health Sciences would like to coin each and every one of you all with one of our Mercy College of Health Sciences coins. And this means that we can't do it by ourselves, we need your help. And our coin is our VOTA coin. It stands for our values, our opportunities, oh, our time, and certainly our attention we're going to extend to our students, to our community, to our friends, because the people of Iowa welcomes you. Now, the moment you all have been waiting for, for me to take my seat, <laughs> I just wonder if I can do one more thing here. I wonder if you would join me in this and pull out your programs. And look at the front of your program, the theme. The theme says, rising as one. But there is something unique on the rising. At the end of the G, there's a bird. There's a bird. So I just wonder if you would rest on your feet with me. If you would rest, stand for me. When I was 12 years old, Pastor Robert Goler is here. He hired me to be his church musician and choir director. Thank you, Pastor Goler, for believing in me. So I'm going to try to compose and conduct you all. So when I raise a finger like this, I want you to do it with me and Caden. I want you to say, rise as one. You have your line? You, you have your script? Do we need a practice run? Are you ready to go? Uh, you ready? Everyone's ready? So today, I believe that we can fly. If we just rise and fly. Oh yeah, you all didn't need any practice. Yeah, that was good. Now, as a, cry, as a uh, former choir director, there's a crescendo, which means the next time got to be louder than the first time. 
So today, I believe that we could soar if we just rise and fly. And today, I believe that we all can touch the sky only if we just Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Good job, brother. Good job. Thank you, Dr. Henry, and congratulations. I speak on behalf of our entire Mercy College community when I say that we are proud be led by a president with such integrity, compassion, and now I guess I can say musical prowess. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, I think that concludes the business portion of the ceremony. Wouldn't you say, should we rise as one and get to some fun? I have one more thing, Dr. Marr. Have you heard what the students have been calling Dr. Henry on campus? Uh, I remember during a photo shoot, he kept telling you to make him look like Denzel Washington. <laughs> Is that what you mean? You don't have Denzel here, do you? <laughs> no Denzel. I think you mean uh, President Fistbump. Oh, President Fistbump. I have heard that. All right, here. Here, take a look at this, bud. I made, oh, good catch. Nebraska could use your help. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we made commemorative President Fistbump inauguration t-shirts in honor of Dr. Henry's inauguration. I get one right, these are cool. When you exit the auditorium to your right, you can pick up your commemorative President Fist Bump inauguration t-shirt. I'm pretty confident to say there's nothing quite like this out there. I think you're right. Well, um, are you done with surprises now or do you have confetti or cannon, something coming from the center? No, the venue nixed all of that, unfortunately. Okay. No pyrotechnics. Well, let's get on with it then. Please stand for the benediction from Bishop Johnson that will include our formal investiture ceremony. Thank you all for joining us to honor Dr. Henry and Mercy College of Health Sciences. Please remain in your seats until the platform party, board of directors, delegates of institutions of higher ed and learning societies and the Mercy College academic procession have all been dismissed. We hope that you will stay and join us for a reception in the lobby immediately following the conclusion of our ceremony. And don't forget your commemorative President Fistbump t-shirts just outside. Thank you for coming and congratulations once again to Dr. Henry and his family. Coins and t-shirts, a lot of swag here today. That's great. Yeah. So we pray and Dr. Henry, would you just come out the center here as we ask a blessing upon you. Almighty eternal God, you revealed your truth to all who seek it. God of power and might, God of healing, God of science, through you all things come to be, are held in being and brought to eternal life. Blessed with your spirit of counsel and fortitude, Dr. Henry, as he assumes his role as president of Mercy College of Health Sciences, may his administration be conducted in righteousness, seeking always after your truth and empowering others to do the same. May he receive constant support from faculty, students, staff, alumni, and benefactors, Together under his leadership, may all the members of the Mercy College family be blessed in knowledge and sanctified in the pursuit of holiness given in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.